What's going on friends? Harley Davidson has traditionally had very simple and easy to work on engines, but there's some things going on at Harley Davidson and I'm seeing some things come down that really looks like things are going to get a bit more complicated. Now, right now, these changes are only starting with some of their top models, but traditionally, the way Harley Davidson does things, eventually it looks like all these things are eventually going to make it into every single production model. Now we've seen some more complicated engines come out of Harley-Davidson before, like with the V-Rod for example, having the dual overhead cams and the downdraft fuel injection. Now that is a big departure from the traditional 45 degree V-Twin. Harley-Davidson for the most part has left that air-cooled 45 degree V-Twin pretty much alone all these years. Yes, it's changed and evolved over time, but the same basic concept has remained the same but it's really looking like that's fixing to change. Are the changes coming? Absolutely. But by the time those changes get down to us, it still looks like we're gonna be able to still continue to work on our own motorcycles at home without too much trouble. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. When Harley-Davidson started putting fuel injection on the old Evolution engine back in 1996, that seemed very scary and very complicated. Now, in that case with the Magneti Morelli system on the Evolution engines when they went fuel injected, that was kind of a scary concept because the Magneti Morelli was very difficult to work on and it was a real pain in the ass to tune. But fortunately, at least those bikes, it was a good system and it was very reliable, but now these bikes are really starting to age, parts are becoming scarce, you really can't get parts for them. So in the case with that, if you do have a Magneti Morelli system, you're probably better off converting over to a carburetor rather than trying to get that thing dialed in and running right because, as I mentioned, you can't even find the parts for it anymore. Now, with the Evolution engine, we got used to simplicity. Everything was very simple, and honestly, just about everything on that motor was serviceable, including the lifter blocks. Now, after the Evolution engine, we moved into the twin cam engine, and of course, that cam chest on the twin cam engine, when you compare that to the Evo motor, it really looked like something off the space shuttle with that cam plate, the dual cams, the tensioners, and the timing chains in there. Now on the twin cam engine, the dust settled, the knowledge started to get out of the dealers, guys started to get in the service manuals, the indie guys started working on them, guys at home started working on them, and we built a really good knowledge base all these years out there over the twin cam motor, even though it looked like impossibly complicated compared to the Evolution engine. Now I have predicted in past videos that the Milwaukee 8 is absolutely going to be the last air-cooled V-twin that Harley-Davidson is going to develop. Now, the Milwaukee A, even having a four-valve head, to me, that is a lot simpler motor than the twin-cam engine was. Just for the simple fact that they went back to a single-cam design, you have one tensioner in there, one chain, it really is a much simpler engine, even though it has a four-valve head. It's really looking like things are going to get a lot more complicated on the Milwaukee 8 here sooner than later. By now, just about everybody has seen those leaked photos of that new CVO Street Glide and that new CVO Road Glide. They got all new bodywork on them, new gas tanks, new bags, this new 121 cubic inch engine, and also kind of looked like they had a new air intake design for them as well. Now there is one little detail in those photos that I don't really feel like has gotten enough attention and it could potentially cause us some problems later on down the road. It looks like Harley-Davidson is going to add a variable valve timing system to that new 121 cubic inch engine. What that's going to look like, nobody knows at this point. We're just going to have to wait for the bikes to come out and for Harley-Davidson to release more information on the system. But it's definitely interesting and worth taking a look at now because variable valve timing, to my knowledge, hasn't ever been done on a pushrod motorcycle engine before. So if you guys know of a motorcycle engine that has variable valve timing with pushrods similar to the Harley engine, let me know in the comments. Now one thing that we can be sure of is that a variable valve timing system on this new Milwaukee 8 engine, this is probably going to more than likely add a lot of complexity to an otherwise pretty simple engine. This actually may not be a bad thing as variable valve timing actually improves fuel economy, improves performance, and also reduces emissions, which is exactly what Harley-Davidson is trying to do. Improving emissions on Harley-Davidson's new out-of-the-factory motorcycles with their Milwaukee 8 engine, this is going to be critical to keep that 45-degree air-cooled V-twin in business and being able to be produced and still satisfy government regulations for as long as possible. Now, it's looking like that 121 cubic inch engine is going to be the new CVO engine 
which makes sense with the way Harley Davidson does things as they kind of move the 117 into more of their mainstream production and out of the CVO line. Now, in the coming years, I would definitely look for this variable valve timing system to be put into the 117, the 114, and maybe even the 107 if they're still going to produce it because we really don't see a lot of bikes in Harley Davidson's lineup now that still carry the 107 engine. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised that at some point in the near future, we don't start seeing this variable valve timing system being added to the 131 and the 135 crate engines. The V-Rod never had variable valve timing, but the new Revolution Max engine that they use in the Pan America and the new Sportsters, this does have variable valve timing. It's going to be very interesting to see how variable valve timing works in an air-cooled 45-degree pushrod V-twin. What I'm curious to see, and this is going to be interesting, is to see if this variable valve timing system, one, if it works as designed, and two, if it doesn't cause any other problems with the engine. As you all know, the Milwaukee 8 has had a lot of issues with something. Even putting a different oil pump in it, cam plate, going through the whole oil system, doing all Harley-Davidson's fixes, even in some cases, that's not a guarantee that it's going to stop it. Now, another thing to be thinking about, if Harley-Davidson is going to be putting variable valve timing into the Milwaukee 8, are we going to be able to just do an aftermarket cam swap in them? Or are we going to have to get some kind of special cam? But I'm pretty confident that the aftermarket is going to come through for us on that, especially if you have to have some kind of certain special cam in there that works with the variable valve timing system. So for sure, there's a lot of questions to answer to see how this variable valve timing system is going to work and kind of get an idea of what we could do with these newer motorcycles. Because as you all know, today's new motorcycles are going to be tomorrow's used motorcycles that we're going to be out there trying to buy on the cheap, just like we do the Evos and the twin cams. And even now, some of the Milwaukee 8 powered bikes to a degree. Harley Davidson adding variable valve timing to the old 45 degree air cooled mill this isn't a bad thing because this has definitely helped prolong the life of that engine and being able to keep it around for just a little bit longer in this ever-changing world where everything's trying to go electric and if it ain't electric, they dang sure want it water-cooled. Because you guys know as well as I do, once that air-cooled 45-degree Harley-Davidson engine goes out of production, it ain't going to come back. So even though it looks like Harley's going to add variable valve timing to just about every single engine they make, it's not a bad thing because, as I mentioned, I'm confident the aftermarket's going to come through for us with fixes and solutions. We're going to get a good knowledge base built up out there. We're going to make working on these variable valve timing V-twins about as common as just swapping a cam on an Evolution engine. But guys, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on Harley-Davidson putting a VVT system into their Milwaukee 8 motors. Do you guys think it's going to work? Do you think it's going to be a total failure? Do you think it's going to cause other problems within the engine itself that are kind of unforeseen? Because, as you know, most companies use their customers as their test bed. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Please don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. But until next week, guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge the cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.